Hello and welcome to the Zoll Zvent in-service demonstration. This multiple part series will provide detailed information about the Zvent portable critical care ventilator and its functionality. In this module, we will review the exterior of the ventilator. The Zvent Portable Critical Care Ventilator is a small, lightweight, fully featured ventilator designed to operate in EMS, hospitals, and critical care environments. Let us begin by exploring the top of the device. At the top right corner is the external power connector, located under the rubber cap notated by the solid and dashed line. The Zvent can operate using external power or from its internal lithium ion battery which provides up to 10 hours of continuous use. At the bottom right corner is the pulse oximetry connector under the square rubber cap labeled SPO2. The Massimo LNCS series of probes are approved for use with the Zvent. When the appropriate sensor is connected, the pulse oximeter provides continuous non-invasive monitoring of SPO2 and heart rate for adult, pediatric, and infant patients. Note that the USB port under the screw cap is used only when servicing and calibrating the device and should not be removed by the user. In the middle, the silver cylindrical port is the primary gas output for the patient inspiratory circuit line. To the left, the threaded port with the green screw cap is the high pressure oxygen input. The Z-Vent can attach to a regulated medical-grade O2 supply of 40 to 87 pounds per square inch gauge. This connection allows for internal oxygen blending from 21 to 100 percent FiO2. Along the left side is a row of three ports. The green nozzle at the top left is the patient airway pressure transducer for the patient circuit. The transducer automatically measures airway pressure within the circuit. The silver nozzle at the bottom left is the exhalation valve port for the patient circuit. The Z-Vent pneumatically controls the exhalation valve to open or close during inspiration and exhalation, or in the event of an alarm. Between the two nozzles, the hexagon-shaped part is the backup exhaust valve for the green and silver lines. The exhaust valve prevents excess pressure from building up inside the transducer and exhalation lines. Now we will look at the front panel of the device. In the lower right corner is the power switch. Simply turn the dial clockwise from 0 to 1 to power the device on and counterclockwise to power down. At the top is the LED array, which indicates the ventilator's operational status. In addition to audible alarms and on-screen prompts, the LEDs will change to yellow or red to alert the care provider of an error. The LEDs will turn green when no alarms or errors are present. Along the right side of the display are the seven parameter buttons. These buttons enable the user to access primary and secondary values and context menus to modify parameter settings. On the left side of the display is the Menu button. This button enables the user to access the ventilator's menu to change core device settings and default profiles. In the middle is the selection dial, which allows the user to navigate the menus or adjust values for a chosen parameter. Once a parameter is chosen and the value set by the selection dial, the user may confirm the changes with the Accept button notated by the checkmark icon. This button also allows the user to acknowledge pop-up messages or select menu choices. To cancel a parameter selection or go to the previous screen in menu navigation, press the Cancel button, notated by the X icon. This button also enables the user to mute audible alarms for 30 seconds, allowing time to resolve the error. In the lower left corner is the Manual Breath button. This button enables the user to deliver a single manual breath to the patient. If the ventilator supports the plateau pressure option, this button will also be labeled P-plat. The user may press and hold this button to perform a plateau pressure maneuver. 
Along the bottom of the front panel is the yellow MR triangle. This label indicates that this device is equipped and approved for MRI-compatible use. Now we will look at the left side of the device. At the top is the fresh gas intake port, which allows ambient air into the device's internal compressor. The Z-Vent can operate either on room air or from an oxygen supply. Inside this port is the internal bacterial and viral filter, rated at 99.99% BVE. This filter should need replacing during the regular annual maintenance. In the event of a ventilator failure during operation, this port is also the emergency air intake, which acts as an anti-asphyxia valve that allows the patient to continue to breathe fresh air. Zoll offers an oxygen reservoir bag assembly kit that allows the use of low-flow oxygen with the ventilator. This provides supplemental oxygen to the patient via a flow meter or oxygen concentrator. Oxygen is delivered through the fresh gas intake port when the internal compressor cycles to deliver a breath. Below the intake port is the device's handle. The Z-Vent weighs only 9.7 pounds and can be easily transported throughout the hospital. Attached to the handle of every new Z-Vent is the Quick Reference Guide. This brief guide provides the user with easy access to basic but important information regarding device navigation and functionality. Now we will look at the back of the device. On the right side are the condensed operating instructions, designed to provide a quick overview on how to prepare the ventilator for patient use. At the top left is the serial number and other device-specific information should the user need it for registration, tracking, or warranty purposes. Contact information for technical support can be found in the Operator's Guide or on Zoll.com. Now we will look at the right side of the device. This is where the service and calibration information is located. This label provides the date of the device's last calibration and when the next service is due. The Z-Vent's calibration is checked as part of the annual service procedure. The Z-Vent should be sent to Zoll for preventative maintenance every 12 months or if the device is ever not functioning properly. We have now completely reviewed the exterior of the ventilator. Throughout the other modules, we will continue to explore the device's functionality and how to prepare the ventilator for use.